Hey guys, this is Mark Goldberg with Mark Vlogs Watches with a very serious and important video today. Before we get started, this is not a dead mouse. It is in fact the windscreen for my lavalier microphone. So I made part one about did I or did I not sell the Sea Dweller 43. I literally had it sold and um, I started to feel an emotional problem that I nicknamed pre-seller's remorse. It wasn't seller's remorse because I hadn't sold the watch. It was pre-seller's remorse because I had given serious consideration to selling the watch and in fact had secured a buyer. Then I started to panic about did I want to sell it or didn't I want to sell it. So before we get into the meat and potatoes of this particular psychological conundrum, dilemma, and trauma, let's go ahead and do the quick fist watch check. Before we do that, please like and subscribe. I'm trying very hard to be one of your favorite YouTube gurus. I really appreciate your being with me if you are subscribed. If you are not, please hit that subscribe button right now and let's take this journey together because I've got so much more watches, obsession, and crazy to share. Are you ready? Here it is, quick fist watch check. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, naked, completely naked. So that is a rarity for this channel. So let's go ahead and discuss what it means. What happened? What am I gonna do? What did I do? What do you think? Guys, before I reveal what really, really happened, let me assure you first, I am not playing with you. I am not toying with you. This is the way the brain of Mark Vlog's watches works. It's a dark, scary, twisted place. So I bought the, uh, I bought the 43 millimeter Sea Dweller because I had the James Cameron and uh, it was a little unwieldy for me. It's a big, thick, top heavy watch, as you know, and it can be a little bit difficult to wear. I love having it. I have considered occasionally selling it, but uh, what I've done instead is put it on a rubber strap to lower the weight, balance the watch, and I wear it sparingly once in a while. And so I started thinking what I need is something a little bit more practical for a daily wear, but I want me a big, manly, thick, girthy kind of a dive watch. And uh, certainly the 43 millimeter Sea Dweller fills the bill, but compared to the James Cameron, it's a much more humane watch. In other words, it's something that you can wear without hurting yourself. So I went ahead, I got very lucky. I bought it from a, a lovely authorized dealer in my general neck of the woods called James and Sons. So a uh, shout out to Rocky and Brian over at James and Sons because I had a terrific buying experience. I felt lucky to get that Sea Dweller red line. It's kind of hard to acquire, but um, yeah, they, they, they did take care of me and I'm pretty sure that they will be happy to take care of you as well. Um, at any rate, I had that watch for a while, and um, as you know, one of, the, one, of the, one of the symptoms of my particular brand of watch disease is that I rotate watches on a very regular basis. That's the first thing. And then the other thing is I am constantly trying to decide where is my, where's my heart at any given moment. Because I started out not liking those little 40 millimeter watches like the Submariner. And um, I was attracted more to the bigger, the brawnier, the larger uh, watches. And in fact, I, I had a brief, uh, passionate uh, affair where I cheated on Rolex with Breitling, with Breitling. And I wound up with four, count them, four big, fat, chubby, shiny, shiny Breitlings. Um, and I have sold off three of them, and I am down to one Breitling, um, which is a world timer, a really interesting watch. I don't toy too much with the idea of selling that one, but I did start looking at my bigger Rolexes and wondering if I should downsize. It's a, it can be quite a commitment to wear a big heavy watch and uh, the, the, the Sea Dweller 43, the more I thought about it, the more I started to notice it while I was wearing it. Whereas if you wear something smaller like a Submariner, it just blends into your wrist and you don't think about it on a minute by minute basis. It's just there. It's just with you. But when you're wearing a Sea Dweller 43, you know it's there. When you're wearing a James Cameron, <laughs> you not only know it's there, um, but you're constantly aware that you could take it off and use it as brass knuckles or that, you know, that it's pulling you down just due to its massive weight. I didn't really think so much about selling the 43 millimeter Sea Dweller until I got an email from a viewer, a subscriber, who asked me what I thought of the watch, did I like it, and asked me what had I ever considered selling mine because he was in the market. 
And that's when it really just brought out a small explosion in my mind of, you know, I'm barely wearing the thing. There are some other things that I would like. I, I'm on the list for something interesting incoming that I can't talk about yet, but eventually will. And wouldn't it be nice to free up the money so I didn't have to invest new funds? And um, hey, I could recuperate most of the funds if I sell that sea dweller. And so without further ado and without thinking too much about it, I just replied back to my subscriber by telling him exactly what I thought of the uh, 43 millimeter 50th anniversary sea dweller. It has pros and cons. Um, there's a Mark I dial and a Mark II dial. The difference is in the Mark II dial, like mine, you have a tiny little coronet between the words Swiss and made. The Mark I dial was only made for a year. It does not have that coronet between Swiss and made. The owners of the Mark I dial are really, um, they're, they're very, very proud of the fact that they own a Mark I dial and they feel it will be worth more money. And you know, maybe in the future they'll be right, but at the current moment, it's not. They're selling for the same. Uh, money. What, what Rolex often does is when they make a slight variation in a watch, they drop that coronet in. So they have done the same thing with the Batman, where Swiss and Maid just had a little line between them. And then the Batgirl now has the little coronet between Swiss and Maid so that it is a standout as a Mark II dial. Rolex does this so that nobody can swap the dials into other watches and um, sort of create a Frank and Rolex. They make little tiny distinguishing marks, like they may, on, on the Submariners, they may put a space between 300 and M for M for meters, just so they can tell when that dial was manufactured and make sure it lines up with the serial number and year of the current and correct watch. Anyway, one of the uh, advantages of uh, the Sea Dweller is that it's, it's large, but it's not as heavy or weighty as the James Cameron or the Deep Sea Sea Dweller, which is 44 millimeters, significantly thicker and significantly heavier. Also, that line of red text is, uh, well, it's killer, it's standout. It's something that Rolex collectors really love. Um, and so I just gave him my thoughts. His wrist is a little bit smaller than mine. Mine is seven and a quarter plus. Look at that gorgeous, beautiful flat wrist bone. You know, sometimes I just want to take pictures of myself and, you know, and touch myself because I'm very lucky. You know, if you've got a, a big wrist, but it's a rounder wrist, then, you know, watch lugs are gonna hang off the edge of your round wrist, but look at that beauty. Mm. I turn myself on sometimes, guys. Anyway, in writing my uh, email to this fellow, I kind of gave him my thoughts on the watch, and uh, I named a figure, uh, which was uh, a little over retail. They, they do sell uh, for a little bit over retail. So I gave him a number that was a little bit over retail, but it wasn't crazy. Uh, I would have made a small profit on the watch. Um, and, uh, and I just shot that email back without thinking about it until I hit the send button. And once that email was gone, I thought I might sell my sea dweller. I might sell my sea dweller. I might sell my sea dweller. Crap. Do I want to sell my Sea Dweller? What if the guy says yes? If he says no, it's going to be easy. I'm not selling my Sea Dweller. But what if, what if, what if the guy says yes? And I and I immediately started to get a lot of angst. Now, of course, I understood if the fellow said, "Yeah, I'll buy it," I could say, "You know, never mind." But it really caused me to spin my brain around. Do I wear it? Should I wear it? Don't I wear it? Why don't I wear it that much? And. Um, I really started to suffer uh, a lot of the pre-seller's remorse where I missed a thing that I still had. And uh, so I just, I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. Did I want to free up the money? Did I want to wear it more? Did I want to face facts that, you know, maybe I should have bought a smaller watch? Oh, because in the interim, I did buy a 40 millimeter Submariner on the used market. I've made a couple of videos about that. And I, it turned out I like it. Uh, you know, I, I thought that the 40 millimeter sub was just going to wear too small for me, but no, I, it turned out I really, really like it. Um, and in fact, I wore it so much that the 43 millimeter Sea Dweller started to feel big, bulky, awkward, girthy. So um, yeah, I'm going, I'm spinning my wheels going through what am I going to do? And, uh, and that's when I got the email back from my subscriber who said, you've got a deal, sir. Package up the watch. Let me wire you the funds. And I thought, now, you know, here is where the SH meets the fan, the brick hits the road. Here's where I've got to make an actual decision. 
month. What do you think I did? Stop the video right now. Go into comments. Tell me, do you think I sold it or do you think I kept it? And then come back to me, restart the video because I'm about to give you the big reveal. And guys, the big reveal goes something like this. Quick fist watch check. Fooled you again. It's the Sea Dweller in 43 millimeters of glorious 904L steel with, I don't know if you can, depending on the light, if you can see that, that, that red line on there. But you can certainly see that it's not a sub, it's girthier than a sub. Anyway, yeah, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And um, what I did do, I pulled it out of the safe and I started to wear it more. And the more I wore it, the gladder I was that I still have it. And then I started to get a little bored with it again because guys, watch disease, I have commitment issues. Anything that I wear for too long, I start to get bored with. And then I question whether I should have this much money tied up in the thing. So for me, one of the major solutions has been locking watches away from myself. They're like Barbies, guys. You know how girls pull out their Barbies? Or when you were little, you pulled out your G.I. Joe and you played with it? Well, once in a while, I have to take a watch that I am getting bored with and I have to lock it up in the safe um, or take it to the bank and get it off premise so that I have no access to that watch and so that I can start missing it again. And then uh, invariably what's going to happen is I'll come across an Archie Luxury video or a Bruce Williams or The Ranch or somebody will make a video, uh, mention the watch that I have had locked away for a week or two and then all of a sudden I'm going to think, hey, I've got one of those and you know what? I miss it. And that's when I can pull that watch out, put it on, and, and get that, that sensation of new all over again. So um, I, I did buy the 40 millimeter Submariner, and it turned out I love it. I really, really love that watch. It's damn near the perfect watch. I mean, it's so perfect, it's almost boringly perfect. But at any rate, I wore that watch for like a month and started to, you know, for an hour or two here or there, wear something else, like the 42 millimeter Explorer. Or if I'm going out for the evening, maybe I'll strap on the Sky Dweller in two-tone. And, um, and that prevents me from becoming too bored with the 40 mil millimeter Submariner. But I started to realize if I'm not careful, I will overwear the sub and I will just like literally wear it out and I'll, I'll start thinking crazy thoughts about parting with it. And so it has been in the safe for a couple of days now. And in its place, I have been wearing this. Now... Here's what I, I know me. What's going to happen is in another two to three days, I'm going to get bored with this sucker. I'll start wondering, gee, maybe I should get rid of it. I, it's enough with this watch. And that's the time when I should avoid my pre-seller's remorse and God forbid full-blown seller's remorse. And this should just go into the safe and something else should come out. So definitely these are first world problems. I'm very, very lucky to have this particular set of problems. But I did promise you a video. Uh, on whether I sold the Sea Dweller or not. And when push came to shove, I really tried, guys. I really, I really thought I could. And more, more importantly, I really thought that I should be fiscally responsible, sell this watch, recuperate my money to invest into the next watch. And then when push came to shove, I just chickened out. I was literally afraid to do it for fear that I would never be able to buy another one, especially with my name on the card, and that, um, and that I would miss it. So I feel like I've made the right decision, but I'd like you to tell me what you would have done, what you think I should have done. Do you think this will be a permanent part of my collection or do you think eventually I'll say, screw it, it's gotta go. But right now, I feel like this is my permanent companion for you know reasonably frequent, but not constant rotation. Constant rotation, I don't know if they've invented the watch that I can wear every day for the next 20 years for the rest of my life and then be happily buried in it figure I'll get bored. I might even get bored in the coffin. What do you guys think? This has been a Mark Goldberg production. Thank you so much for being with me. Tell me what you think. Let's talk about it. Subscribe, all that stuff. This is Goldberg. Peace out. Still got the Sea Dweller.